A Buddhist chant is a form of musical verse or incantation, in some ways analogous to Hindu, Christian or Jewish religious recitations. They exist in just about every part of the Buddhist world, from the Wats in Thailand to the Tibetan Buddhist temples in India and Tibet. Almost every Buddhist school has some tradition of chanting associated with it, regardless of tradition. Traditional chanting In Buddhism, chanting is the traditional means of preparing the mind for meditation, especially as part of formal practice in either a lay or monastic context. Some forms of Buddhism also use chanting for ritualistic purposes. While the basis for most Theravada chants is the Pali Canon, Mahayana and Vajrayana chants draw from a wider range of sources. Theravada chants In the Theravada tradition, chanting is usually done in Pali, sometimes with vernacular translations interspersed. Among the most popular Theravada chants are Buddhabhivadana, preliminary reverence for the Buddha, Tiratana, the three refuges, Pankasila, the five precepts, Buddha Vandana, salutation to the Buddha, Dhamma Vandana, salutation to his teaching. Sangha Vandana, salutation to his community of noble disciples. Upajathana, the five remembrances. Metta Sutta, discourse on loving kindness. Reflection on the body, recitation of the 32 parts of the body. The traditional chanting in Khmer Buddhism is called smat. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Mahayana Sutra chants. Since Japanese Buddhism is divided in 13 doctrinal schools, and since Chan Buddhism, Zen and Buddhism in Vietnam, although sharing a common historical origin and a common doctrinal content, are divided according to geographical borders, there are several different forms of arrangements of scriptures to chant within Mahayana Buddhism. Daily practice in Nichiren Buddhism is chanting the five character of Namu Myoho Renge Kyo homage to the true Dharma of the Lotus Sutra. A Mahayana Sutra that reveals the true identity of Shakyamuni as a Buddha who attained enlightenment numberless kalpas ago. Kumarahiva's translation, which is widely honored, is entitled The Lotus Sutra of the Wonderful Law The mystic relationship between the law and the lives of the people courses eternally through past, present, and future, unbroken in any lifetime. In terms of space, the Nichiren proclaims that the heritage of the ultimate law flows within lives of his disciples and lay supporters who work in perfect unity for the realization of a peaceful world and happiness for all humanity. Nichiren practitioners will chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, the true aspect of all the phenomena, and recite certain chapters from the Lotus Sutra, in particular the second and sixteenth chapters. Pure Land Buddhists chant Nianfo, Namu Amida Butsu or Namo Amatuofo, homage to Amitabha Buddha. In more formal services, practitioners will also chant excerpts from the larger Sutra of a Measurable Life or occasionally the entire smaller Sutra of a Measurable Life, a sutra not unique for Pure Land Buddhism, but chanted in the evening by chanting. Buddhists and Tendai Buddhists as well. Popular with Zen, Shingon or other Mahayana practitioners is chanting the Prajnaparamita Raideya Sutra, Heart Sutra especially during morning offices. In more formal settings, larger discourses of the Buddha such as the Diamond Sutra in Zen temples and the Lotus Sutra in Tendai temples may be chanted as well. Particularly in the Chinese, Vietnamese and the Japanese traditions, repentance ceremonies, involving paying deep reverence to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, as well as executing rituals to rescue and feed hungry ghosts, are also occasionally practiced. There is no universally used form for these two practices, but several different forms, the use of which follows doctrinal and geographical borders. Within Chan, it is common to chant Sanskrit formulae, known as Dharanis, especially in the morning. Topic. Vajrayana chants In the Vajrayana tradition, chanting is also used as an invocative ritual in order to set one's mind on a deity, tantric ceremony, mandala, or particular concept one wishes to further in themselves. For Vajrayana practitioners, the chant Om Mani Padmi Hum is very popular around the world as both a praise of peace and the primary mantra of Avalokiteshvara. Other popular chants include those of Tara, Baisajyaguru, and Amitabha. 
Tibetan monks are noted for their skill at throat singing, a specialized form of chanting in which, by amplifying the voice's upper partials, the chanter can produce multiple distinct pitches simultaneously. Japanese esoteric practitioners also practice a form of chanting called shomayo. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Critique of melodious chanting. Topic: <coughs> Gitasara Sutta. In the Gitasara Sutta, Anguttara Nikaya 5.209, the Buddha teaches: Bhikkhus, there are five dangers of reciting the Dhamma with a musical intonation. What five? One self gets attached to the sound, others get attached to the sound, householders are annoyed, saying, just as we sing, these sons of the Sakyan sing, the concentration of those who do not like the sound is destroyed, and later generations copy it. These, monks, are the five dangers of reciting the Dhamma with a musical intonation. Topic. Defense of chanting John Dato Lori justified the use of chanting sutras by referring to Zen master Dogen. Dogen is known to have refuted the statement, "...painted rice cakes will not satisfy hunger." This statement means that sutras, which are just symbols like painted rice cakes, cannot truly satisfy one's spiritual hunger. Dogen, however, saw that there is no separation between metaphor and reality. There is no difference between paintings, rice cakes, or anything at all. The symbol and the symbolized were inherently the same, and thus only the sutras could truly satisfy one's spiritual needs. To understand this non-dual relationship experientially, one is told to practice liturgy intimately. In distinguishing between ceremony and liturgy, Dogen states, "...in ceremony there are forms and there are sounds, there is understanding and there is believing. In liturgy there is only intimacy." The practitioner is instructed to listen to and speak liturgy not just with one sense, but with one's whole body and mind. By listening with one's entire being, one eliminates the space between the self and the liturgy. Thus, Dogen's instructions are to listen with the eye and see with the ear. By focusing all of one's being on one specific practice, duality is transcended. Dogen says, let go of the eye, and the whole body and mind are nothing but the eye, let go of the ear, and the whole universe is nothing but the ear." Chanting intimately thus allows one to experience a non-dual reality. The liturgy used as a tool to allow the practitioner to transcend the old conceptions of self and other. In this way, intimate liturgy practice allows one to realize emptiness sunyata, which is at the heart of Zen Buddhist teachings. Non-canonical uses of Buddhist chanting There are also a number of New Age and experimental schools related to Buddhist thought which practice chanting, some with understanding of the words, others merely based on repetition. A large number of these schools tend to be syncretic and incorporate Hindu japa and other such traditions alongside the Buddhist influences. While not strictly a variation of Buddhist chanting in itself, Japanese shigen is a form of chanted poetry that reflects several principles of Zen Buddhism. It is sung in the Siza position, and participants are encouraged to sing from the gut, the Zen locus of power. Shigen and related practices are often sung at Buddhist ceremonies and quasi-religious gatherings in Japan. See also Topic. Further reading Chen, Pai Yen 2010. Chinese Buddhist Monastic Chants. Middleton, Wyss, A. R. Editions. ISBN 9780895796381. Chen, Pai Yen 2002. The Contemporary Practice of the Chinese Buddhist Daily Service, Two Case Studies of the Traditional in the Post-Traditional World. Ethnomusicology. 46 to 226-249. JSTOR 852780. Topic. Notes. Topic. References. Topic. External links Buddhist chanting. At Budanet Audio
A Chanting Guide by the Damayat Order in the United States of America. Chanting with English Translations and Temple Rules. Chant Book of the Quan Um School of Zen. Perceive Universal Sound. Article on Zen chanting by Korean Zen master Sung San, originally published in The American Theosophist, May 1985, and reprinted in Primary Point, Volume 5, Number 3, November 1988. Buddhist chanting service important Theravada chanting texts digitized for online contemplation and chanting Pali chants a collection of audio files of Pali chants. Morning, evening chants, reflections, discourse, blessings, etc.